I didn't get into Okay. Welcome everyone. Um, let's come to order. I think, Julie, do we have anyone signed in from the public? We do not. Okay, so we'll save a few minutes there. Maybe we'll end early. Um, so let's just do an agenda review. Um, this was sent out um, about a week and a half ago. Does anyone other than me have anything to add or change? As I mentioned to folks, I would like to um, add an item, it can be our third bullet item in the administrative items, the testimony on the, what is it called? <laughs> LD1976. Yeah. Um, the, the growth management law, LD1976. Um, so let's just have that as a third bullet. Okay. So dispensing with public comment, um, let's look at the minutes of October 16th. Um, they were sent out, or the link was sent out. If anyone has any changes or corrections, please say so. Otherwise, I will assume that they are approved. Just nod at me a little bit. Beautiful, thank you. <laughs> um, and then we have just a few calendar items. Um, the CPIC workshops, um, it was unclear after our second workshop whether or not we would have any more. Um, and it seems to me uh, the value of them is pretty clear, and pretty high. Um, and although uh, we haven't scheduled anything right now, I think we will end up having one more. The holidays are coming up. Exactly when that will be scheduled, we'll see. You know, that's. I think we're not ready to do that yet. Um, unfortunately, with the uh, tragic shooting in Lewiston, we had to cancel the um, the open house for property owners. And we had a small group that was signed up for that. And hopefully we will um, have that size and if not larger um, with the additional time and the additional postcard. Um, we've contacted the library and we have um, another session scheduled for December 2nd. We had a couple of choices, but staying away from the holidays as far as I could, <laughs> I think seemed to be the good thing to do. When, when you say there was a, uh, so for a small number, what? We had about six or a seven. Handful, I think. Yeah, I mean, you asked five to respond in. Yeah. Did they need to sign up? They did. We asked them. Four of us. They, yeah. There could be a one on one relationship. Yeah. <laughs> well, I will say we've gotten yeah. a few calls since then yeah. oh, inquiring about the recode and did they oh. miss the meeting because they didn't know oh. that it actually happened. Oh. Right. So, right. See. We'll see if yeah. there'll be a few more. Um, so just let me take a little straw poll. Um, I, I think we were going to have a very good turnout by the committee. Um, are folks able to come on Saturday, December 2nd? Yeah, for the, you know, whether we, you need to come early or not is a question. We'll see. Um, I think, and Julie, do you have any sort of quick and dirty sort of description of what we have to display. You found a few things from the update process, mm -hmm. right? And we found some, some posters. I think I probably have maybe six posters from um, the comprehensive plan process, old posters. Um, and then Leslie sent, I wanna say six or seven. Um, that you were to she's yeah, she's made. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And did that seem to be sort of sufficient in your I think mind? Be, yeah. yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. I feel a lot more comfortable going into this uh, 
knowing, seeing what we have, and having an opportunity to talk about what it is we are going to have, what we're going to do right. with it. Right. Uh, and maybe that would be the focus of a, I don't know if we could do it between now and that as a workshop. But, um, well, that's the next question, actually, which is um, even though it's early in the Thanksgiving week, the 21st, our workshops are always just an hour. I think it would be good for us to have that workshop session mm -hmm. um, to sort of look at those items and talk it through a little bit. Mm -hmm. It started to get real for me when I started delving into the use table. You know, I talked things over with Julie and it, it you know, it's sort of looking at what the use table is going to mean for property owners. I mean, there are different ways to look at it, but if we have that hour with each other, mm -hmm. I think it would be useful yeah, and would people be willing to come for that hour? It's also, you know, you can come virtually, but um, and Larry, you are always welcome. <laughs> we, we need... I, will, I will be on the road on the well, 21st. Okay, because we're, we're... I already know that. Yeah, we usually meet up in the second floor conference room, yeah. so... Um, what do you think, Robin? Are you oh, possibly on the, road, on the awesome. road as well? Okay. So there'll be notes. And, um, but not possible. together. No. <laughs> <laughs> possible that I'll be, you know, able to log in and just look. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> to do what? To review. To sort of think about how that property owner's open house is gonna go. We can we'll have a chance to look at the materials that will be posted and displayed. And um, you know, I I don't know if I mean one thought that I had is would it be helpful to have somebody like Tom like talk through like this is the about the change or do you feel like um my, the I think the biggest thing that our job will be will be to listen to people's questions mm -hmm. and concerns. Some things we may be able to answer, but a lot of it is going to be, um, you know, this is where I live. This is what I'd like to do. Will I be able to do as maybe more than I have with the old code? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that's the, it's having that conversation individually with property owners. Pete, did I sense a comment coming? No. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and meet on the twenty first. Yeah, and the preparation uh, would be good. Yeah. Okay. So that's a four. That's a four. Yeah, four to five up in the second floor conference room. Can I ask one more question about go that? Ahead. Um. So I had um shared that that. Uh, workshop got rescheduled with Yvette from the Energy yeah. Committee. Yeah. But I don't know, do they have to be a property owner in the Thompson Center zone to be able to attend? It's a public yeah. meeting. It's a public so meeting. Anybody, so can come. anybody can come. And I think, you know, the other group of people were, were, in, were mailing postcards to property owners, but it's going to be posted, you know, on the town website. And I think particularly a butters to that town center recode area might be interested, um, you know, but anybody might be interested and anybody's welcome to come. So, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so ready to move on to testimony. Um, I think we've had a few comments. I'm just going to share my screen. Um, let's see. If I'm... That, oh, yeah, there it is. And there it is. So I don't know if folks had a chance to look at the few little changes that have been suggested. I think they're very, they improve the testimony. Um, you know, this doesn't have to be as representing CPIC. It can be, the reason 
I decided to do it as I, I realized after talking with um, Rod Melanson that, you know, we have a plan. It did not get approved. It was a tremendous amount of additional work to get it approved. I've not seen that document. I don't know what that looks like, but a lot of it had to do with meeting that inventory checklist. Um, it seems from what I've read that there's a need to update this thing. And um, I'm not a lawyer. I don't have the expertise to say, is this a perfect update? But I do trust the people involved in looking at it. Um, and so I was motivated to put this together. And if the committee is happy to have me do it as the chair of CPIC, I'll do that. Otherwise, I'm very happy to do it as a private citizen. I would think that if, if we all agree on the committee that it's the with what we have set up, which I'm totally in agreement, then I think we should you should represent it. Mm -hmm. Great. I agree. Yeah. I, I do I like concur. I mean, I think your, your voice will have more power as mm -hmm. the chair of the committee. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I think it, it represents what we're working. Okay. Right. I've heard from a couple of people. Um, Andy, um, he couldn't be here today, but he said he's, he's just not sure. I think he hasn't looked at the whole thing. And Margaret, I think you have some questions. I mean, anybody looking at those highlights on the legislation would probably have a lot of questions. Um, and to, to tell you the truth, my focus was on the um, talking points in terms of what are the benefits? You know, it's a one page document. I looked at this and I trust that whatever feedback is happening in the committee process, it's gonna come out shaped by you know these talking points this is the 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 direction it's getting pushed in and it sounds good to me so um but i you know i don't want anybody to feel that they have to agree to jump on board I, my comments were just some of the specifics that you had mentioned about how difficult or like the challenges that mm. we ran into i was i couldn't connect to how the legislation would address any of those things specifically um, if I spent more time on it, maybe. Um, but I think probably what you're getting to is that in general, the legis or the current legislation, yeah. the way it's written, needs yeah. to be streamlined and made more efficient. And we ran into a set of problems that could be addressed by, by the new yeah. more Right. Um, streamlined, I suppose. Yep. Yeah, I, I think the legislation is aiming to support towns going through a comp plan update process mm -hmm. in a more in a in a way that allows towns to really engage in the visioning that we did. That's not always done, you know, mm -hmm. and how valuable that is. Um, rather than on sort of the inventory checklist, where I think the current legislation puts a lot of emphasis on that. Um, so it sounds as though the way the legislation currently works, it's written more for uh, people at the state level to yep. check off the boxes than it is to help the municipalities. Yeah. 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 And I'll be, you know, interested to hear what other folks say, and I'd be interested to hear what the main municipal association says. Mm -hmm. um, you haven't probably heard anything from no. them. No. Okay. So you know, it's it's a process. So could I? Um, I didn't have edit access, but could I request access to edit and then just add comments? I know that it's you're wanting to submit them tomorrow morning. Right? No, I'm actually going to submit it tonight. Tonight, because okay. you have to. So, I mean, do you? <laughs> I mean, if you have, but honestly, if you have any serious objections mm -hmm. to the letter as it's written, I'll just do it as a private citizen. Um, that actually brings up a question. Maybe you know, Mark. Does uh, Susan need? Or a stamp of furniture as a committee chair than just saying you know, the committee agrees. Um, what I would do is take a vote in the 
if you want it to go on, if it's going to be an official committee thing, you take a vote and the yeah. majority wins because <laughs> we have a quorum. And so, yeah. <clears throat> and if, if the majority doesn't vote to support it, then Susan can just send it on her own and just, as she wrote, or one of the, you know, could indicate there she did. It's yeah. her private viewpoint. Okay. I didn't know if it needed something further, like select board or anything else yeah. to. Not for this. Not for this. Okay. Because yeah. she's not saying this is the position of the town of Thompson. She's saying right. this is the just position of the CPA. Yeah. Right. You guys make that decision. Yeah. So, I'm Rob, I'm curious. Um, is there going to be a public hearing on this? Yes. Okay. Yes. Are you going to testify? Yes. Or... So it's tomorrow morning. Okay. It's at 10 o'clock, and there's other stuff. On that, and I'm not driving up. I'm doing it by Zoom. I wondered if um, that was still available. That's great. Yeah, that is great. <laughs> and it's going to be likely closer to eleven o'clock. But you've got to upload it in the portal and blah blah blah. So yeah, rather than, I think minor, like pretty minor, just by adding a couple of words. Yeah. You know, that, and I would feel good because some of these things just don't make sense to me. Oh. So oh, that's that's okay. Okay. And I would be happy to sign on. Sure. Um, if you want to just like afterwards, we could just. Um, well, to have a, are people willing to have yeah. this vote on this basis? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all in favor of, I'm going to submit this as a CPEC testimony. Um, just raise your hand. I don't vote. Right. Correct. <laughs> um, so, we, so, we do have. Or the vote, and let's just sit for 10 minutes afterwards, yeah, and then we will Yeah, good. thank you. That's okay. great. Okay, so back to um, I'll stop screen sharing. That was well, that was well written. Oh, thank you. You know, I think it certainly ties into the their objectives, and yeah, and I would think they'd be interested in learning about what you know, mm -hmm. where our objectives are, right? And I, I didn't want to get Beyond my expertise, so I kept no, it no. within. You, yeah, you get the important point. Yeah. Okay, so let's go on to um, recode update. I don't think we have much to say today about a, a prep. You know, to to uh, to have any preparation, um, but on the twenty first, okay. I think um, maybe we can think about right now, like what is it that will be helpful? I feel pretty distant from it because I looked at some things. Um, I think Julie sent some links around. We have uh, we have access to the old, the old code, right? And, and I'm just wondering like, what would be the most helpful thing to look at in order to have a good productive discussion on the 21st. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that I thought of was, you know, use table. Can I do on my property what I want? The, the, there are some tables around the current code, um, the size of the lot that you need, mm -hmm. you know. Um, did you send those around? I think you did. I can't remember if I sent them to everybody or no, just, just me. Uh, okay, so um, that may be a helpful thing. I'll send. I'll make sure I send those around. Um, meaning, right now, if you whatever lot you own in that town center area, you know, you may or may not be able to build on it because of the size of the lot or you may not be able to build what you want, and will that change? In a lot of cases, it will change. Um, you know, there's, there's form-based code is more prescriptive, and at the same time, it looks at things differently. So there's more flexibility than what's in the current code. So why don't we just look at those couple of things, like the current um, setback and that kind of thing. There's, there's there's a table that if you can focus on it without having it, you know, blow your, blow your mind, um, you know, it may help to formulate some questions. Maybe what I could do is, um, so I created a matrix, which I can share with all of you that has um, all the tops and center properties split up by zoning district. Right. And then 
what the uses are currently and whether those uses are permitted uses under the current code and what the status of those uses will be under the proposed code. That, that sounds great. Huge. So I have that. I could also take the dimensional table and do like a comparison between the current and the proposed. So we have that. That sounds great too. Yeah. On yeah. The the nine big ideas yeah. that can, of course, that can come out of the comp plan and, and somehow applying those to the accomplishments that you know, the changes, the new changes, uh, and, and where, and generally speaking, mm -hmm. where those occur. Uh, that, something like that might be helpful. Well, you're opening another door. And I, I, no, I think it's a very good one, but um, I don't know if this particular session for property owners just in the town center is the place to do that. Um, but the, uh, but the, I don't know, maybe we should sit on that. <laughs> um, the thing where that's come up recently for me is I spoke with someone who's pretty active in the town. I don't think it's, you know, she doesn't come to every select board meeting or planning board meeting, but she's aware of stuff going on. And she said, I just haven't kept up with what's going on with recode. Like, you know, how could I get brought up to date? And I just, I wonder if um, sort of a, like a, a more generic, 101 level session for town residents, not about town center, but about the whole plan yeah. and looking at things like the matrix and looking at some of the strategy items. I mean, not many people have access to this document as a document. They have access to it online. Right. And and nobody but us or you know other committees who have asked for it have access to the matrix, where you can sort of see what are the strategy items that the planning board is supposed to be taking the lead on, or conservation commission, and sort of how things are moving along. So I think I don't know, but that's I bring that up to sort of you know. I mean, if somebody were to say, what's going on with the implementation of our plan? You know, I could say we'll focus mostly on the town center recode and we're updating the what's beyond that. But there's a lot more. And and the nine big ideas, some of them speak loudly, some of them more quietly, um, but not to lose track of any of them might be something for after the holidays. <laughs> well, somebody might say, well, are the in my neighborhood, are, 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 the, are the streets going to be safer for pedestrians and bicyclists, mm -hmm. which was one of the big ideas? Yeah. Or, you know, I live here and I travel to, um, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the mall, mm -hmm. uh, the Thompson Fair Mall. Will it be easier for me to walk? Safer for me, for, safer for me to do that? Yeah. yeah. And I can hear some of those come up. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't have any answers off the top of my head right now. Right. Well, I mean, in a, those kinds of questions, yeah. we could say something specific like, you know, there is now a bicycle pedestrian committee. They're working on it. Um, exactly where they are in that process, I'm right. not sure. But if we had sort of a a half day session, something a little more expansive time wise than we've got for the property owner session coming up on December 2nd, and invited, you know, departments and commissions and whatever to sort of come and be part of this discussion, it might be kind of interesting. Um, so, why don't we just leave it there for now <laughs> um, and come back to it? Um, but part of what I'm kind of assuming is that we're all, you know, members of our community. We talk to people about what we do, and I'm curious how people are responding. Are they interested in what's going on? And are you comfortable talking about what's going on? 
Um, and, and we're going to come back to this at the very end of our agenda when we talk about liaison updates. But um, having, you know, it's sort of like approaching the thing backwards. You know, this is the kind of thing we could have had out of the gate when we started our work. But we, we knew that we wanted to get into we code, and so that was our driving right. focus. Um, it's not a bad thing right now, after three years, to sort of pause and take a look at the whole process and see where we are, and and you know make note of some accomplishments. Mm -hmm. so, Mark, yeah, Mark. Back to the uh, seventy-second meeting. Yeah, I think those are two great ideas. The charts comparing the setbacks yes. and the uses. Yeah. Maybe the third piece that people might be interested in is to what extent the building type is going to affect them. You know, to what extent do they have to do? Is it not until they do an addition or? Yeah. It, um, that's probably going to come up a lot of questions for people. Now I'm assuming that some of this, at least one of the things that Leslie sent was about the building types because mm -hmm. that's going to be a big new thing. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, she blew up some of those tables. Yes. Great. Okay, so we'll focus on that on November 21st. Okay, um, so office hours, we'll have another one. We don't know when. Um, How long can we comfortably not have another one without losing the... It felt like we had really good momentum yep. with the, uh, the developers. And I'd like not to, to lose that yep. uh, or to lose their, I, I don't think we stand for losing their interest, but uh, I think it would be good to uh, just to keep the momentum going. I agree with you. Any other thoughts on that? Um, I mean, it, the tricky part is the holidays. Yeah. You know, we need to let people have their family time. <laughs> and uh, and I think the more the value that we've seen in those office hour sessions has come from the developers who have had time to really delve into the code. When they have that time, the session is incredibly productive, both for them, for us, and other folks who are listening in who have not done that kind of detailed examination. But I think right now, given what's going on in terms of the ramp up to the holidays and the need to really spend some time with um, the code, um, you know, I've talked to a couple of people and they, they've sort of said, we need a little bit of time and I'll get back to you. I think we just have to expect that and, you yeah. know. Trust. I just don't want them to think we're the ones who were right. uh, disinterested. Right. The, the one I think we need to uh, communicate with is our consultants in terms of sort of where we are because the end of like, what is the cutoff point for feedback into this draft? That's the big question I think that they're living with. And before there's a new draft and that goes for the public session, I think we just have to say that there's a little bit more delay while we gather more input. And is this from developers who have not had a chance to voice their questions yet or? They have more. They have more. Have more. Well, are we looking toward a final draft then? Once we get some once feedback. we get more feedback. It, well, and I wouldn't say no. It's it's a near to final draft. Okay. It's the draft revised that will go to the public. Right. And and on that draft, after public open houses, we will have. Correct me on this, Mark. Will it be on that revised draft, the public hearings, planning board, select board, or will the public hearings be on what we hope to go on the warrant? 
when does back the to the Ernest and Julio thing of Calo, we'll sell the wine before it's time. <laughs> right. Um, I think you probably get that next draft back. Take you start getting more comments and things, um, and you may decide, geez, we want to do another revision before we really launch it into the planning board officially and stuff. So, because I, as we kind of talked about, till we get this broad feeling that it's supported by a lot of different things, it's yep. almost a waste of time to move forward. Because right. Um, so. But, we'll take it as it comes. But just that question of when do you hold a public hearing? We, we have, have to have one on the one we want to go on the, the town one. meeting for it. Right. So nothing says we can't get a public comment we want before, but right. the, the final version to go on the warrant needs to go through the public hearing process. Okay. So. And probably both with the planning board and the and the select board will have another round of workshops, is that yeah. is what I'm guessing. With the next revisions. Yeah. Any more comments, questions on that? Is that I'm just thinking through the progression, like yeah. So the property owners get to view this first draft in December. We will get more comments from developers yeah. to produce a second draft. And then that second draft will go before the planning board and on another select board, probably. Yep. Yeah. Yep. workshop and public um, open houses so members of the public probably at the library or could be at the town office but, but more likely okay. the library so know. a public hearing is different from right okay right and you may want to and we've talked about this at different points but do that exercise thing where they have one of the developers and leslie and Work or a bunch of the developers as a group work through a project so they can really see the intricacies of it. Right. Maybe even before we do the next draft, so they can incorporate whatever suggestions are coming. Well, that's something that Jim is supposedly working on, right? Right, but that's going to be time consuming, <clears throat> and um, I don't know when that might happen. Mm -hmm. So that's still a possibility in progress. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see. Yeah. There's a lot, there are many stages here because it's a big change. Um, okay. Quoting Robert Frost, miles to go before you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, next item here. Um, why am I? I put this down as select board update. Um, why did I do that? It doesn't make all seven. Yeah. Their regular meeting time. That, that would be their regular meeting yeah. time. And I think until we, I mean, I have to think because there's a new. Two new, new members. Two new, two new members. members. Yeah. 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 And yeah, that's coming up real soon. Yeah. Yes. There's <laughs> already maybe a couple other updates that night too. So maybe you want to put that up. Right. Maybe early January. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you were thinking of the of the uh, open house. I know Nick. I know Nick Susan do some of your stuff. She doesn't do a good job. <laughs> so let's see what. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll aim for that first meeting, whenever that first meeting is in in uh, January, because I know they they want to have okay. the um, update in their hands at least a couple weeks ahead. And they actually. From what Derek set out a couple of weeks ago, they may not have that the first, first meeting in January. Yeah. So because of the maybe, holidays. First meeting may be the third Thursday. Third okay. So is the select uh, the new select board, are they seated already? Sworn in? They have they we don't have a big formal ceremony, so they they two have been sworn in so they can sign paper over with them. I saw. Um, but their first meeting will be this Thursday night. Oh. Um, but that, that's a pretty light agenda. Uh -huh. I think it's buying a snow plow, or not a snow plow, but a sidewalk plow. Uh, uh -huh. And then they're going to pick their chair and things and try to maybe a grant for the fire department or something. It's pretty light. Mm -hmm. Good. Let them in easy. Okay. So I just I put down staff review um, team just to see if that is likely to come up for another round of um, feedback. I know there were a couple of important members of the staff review team who weren't part of that first mm -hmm. round. Um, are we looking 
to have that happen. I haven't possibly. had any more feedback from anyone. Um, right now, we don't have another staff review meeting scheduled for me to, to piggyback on. Um, we might be having one soon. So I will um, I will follow up with staff about that. Okay. Okay. And then finally, um, I included on our agenda um, the code cleanup and update that the planning board is working through just to sort of hear how that process is going. Um, so our last uh, workshop was canceled. Uh, we have not rescheduled yet. Um, I do have to work with the chair on, he wanted to kind of come up with a workshop schedule, what is still left to be discussed and when we're going to tackle each one of those right. um, topics. So no, we, we still have to work on more work to do on um, the conditional use permit criteria. Um, and the last couple articles of the um, ordinance we have not got to yet. Um, we also have some subdivision ordinance changes that I have made that I want to go over with them. Um, so I'm hoping maybe the end of November we might be able to. And was that the workshop that was canceled that was going to look at the subdivision mm -hmm. ordinance changes? Yeah. Any questions or comments? End of November. I'm hoping. We'll see. End of November. Yeah. It might be too soon. Good. It's kind of sneaking up on us, isn't it? It is sneaking up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. With the holidays next week, that probably would not happen. Because the planning board meets on the second and fourth Thursday, right? Yeah. And there's a the fifth. fifth. Thursday after Thanksgiving. Right, because right. Thanksgiving is the third, second, the fourth, 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 fourth Thursday. Well, we might so, have a. Yeah. So maybe we could do that. <laughs> or maybe even. No, maybe in the November is right. <laughs> <laughs> maybe even the beginning of December. We actually, because the fifth uh, Thursday was open, I stole the night for a uh, Pleasant Point Road engagement meeting in this room. Right. Okay. That was on Thursday? The yeah, Thursday, the 29th. 30th. Oh, actually, the 29th. Of Yes, yeah, the 30th. Yeah, I think yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, 20, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we can go on to liaison updates. Um, I suggested to folks that if you haven't reached out to the group that you are, that you've agreed to liaise with, please do. Last month, we had updates from both Margaret and Andy. Um, and we've had a couple from Pete along the way about the planning board. Um, I would love to just get uh, a sense from people like where you are with things. And I know the focus has been on RECO, but there's other things waiting in the wings. Um, and so I'm just, you know, putting it out there. They're putting yeah. it out there and yeah. gonna wait for you to respond. Yeah. Well, I will do that. Um, I've been tracking the community center uh, on the town website, and it, it doesn't, it, it did feel to me like there'd been, a, a, at least what's available on the website, there'd been sufficient and substantive enough changes to warrant getting together again with, with Pam. Um, so, um, In terms of the community center yeah. committee. You want to join, you kind of fill in with that stuff. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. You know? So it was kind of on hold, or maybe hold is not the right word, but the consultant we had hired decided he maybe wasn't the best person for what they needed. Um, so he ended up bringing in a sub consultant to help with the needs assessment. Yeah. Um, and what happened at the meeting, it was the same that you guys did your last meeting. It was a simultaneous one. Um, and they designed um, questions for a public public engagement sessions. There's going to be five or six of them in January. And they range from like a Saturday at 10 to a Wednesday night at 6.30 to a 2 o'clock and a third. We have different days of the week, different times. 
Um, they have a list of about 175 people's email addresses associated with different groups throughout the community. Mm -hmm. um, so they're meeting on the 20th to go through, call the list, figure out who they want to send things to. The, December is going to be spent doing kind of mass mailing notices or every different type we come up with um, to collect people interested in participating in focus groups. There'll be about an hour and a half each. Mm -hmm. Then those groups will get set up in early January and they'll be held on one of those five times. I think there's a snow one thrown in too. Uh, then based on the results from that, uh, then there's going to be um, a report written. Also, the consultants are going to come up with a survey which we may try to do in conjunction with the March primary mm -hmm. um, so that they can get more specific stuff from the town people. And then result of that survey in conjunction with the focus groups would be go back to the select board with here's what the needs assessment is. And it could range anything from looks like people just want more activities and there's places where we could use you know, the school that we're not currently or something. Um, or it could be Looks like there is a need for a building. People are willing to pay for a building. Um, and then the next question is, what would that be? Um, when we did the first survey, I don't think we had enough emphasis on maybe the possible tax costs or things. Mm -hmm. So we had, let's have an Olympic sized pool, let's have a skating rink. <laughs> you know, it's um, probably the wish big, list. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So hopefully the result of this is going to be some um, well informed analysis of. For this town the size of Topsom, you know, maybe it's something like the St. John's building in Brunswick, you know, that they built. It's a large um, room that can be used for meetings or dances or <coughs> dinners, mm -hmm. um, but not necessarily ten. Um, what's the new thing? Not tennis. Uh, pickleball. Oh, pickleball. Not necessarily ten pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but it could come out anywhere at, at this point. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's where they're at is the, the consultants are engaged with the committee and they're doing, getting ready to have these public engagement sessions for the needs analysis. So it sounds like a, a greatly amplified uh, uh, process that they went through several, like two, three years ago. There, were, there was a, uh, a questionnaire uh, opportunity yeah. for people to submit, but it wasn't, it wasn't very, um, yeah, it wasn't very detailed. It and also didn't have all the, you know, the reality check about what it would cost. It, it tried to have somewhat of a reality check, but I don't think it was enough. Yeah. Or maybe just the people that took it um, didn't really think about the, they're like, I really want this. Mm -hmm. um, the kind of the marching orders way back when that was done was the select board said, we want at least a thousand responses and we want to have a sense before we spend any more money on this process if there's community interest in it. Mm -hmm. um, we had a Bowdoin student that helped with it and but bottom line, it wasn't significant, statistically significant as far as all the analysis and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so we knew that it was, we had a great response. We had over a thousand and we worked hard to get up by going to the June school election and doing Facebook and everything else. Um, and we had ways that were pretty much keep people from doing two responses and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we, we do think it was a thousand genuine opinions. I think. That's a lot. Um, but what we don't have, because obviously before we spend millions of dollars, we want more than just kind of a staff and bone student led effort. We want to have experts in the field. Yeah. Even this, what's going on is not going to be, you know, they warned us significant, statistically significant, because um, we're not doing random phone polls, you mm -hmm. know, and of course no one answers those anymore anyway. Uh, so I think they thought that was too hard or it can't be done. But we do have the expert analysis of these um, folks that collect data and do these um, surveys and things. So we're hoping it will give us realistic answers. And that's great. Um, so at least we'll have had paid experts to come to help us come to a conclusion mm -hmm. as opposed to kind of just us little bit our own. Yeah. Um, but, but we are mindful of what you just said. And we're going to be careful when the survey is put out and how it's written so that people don't think, why am I doing this again? I did this three years ago, whatever mm -hmm. it was. Um, so it's going to explain that this has kind of been informed by the focus groups that have happened and mm -hmm. uh, try to elaborate more on their answers and so Good. Thanks. So yeah. it sounds like this meeting coming up on the 20th will be sort of really focused on planning those focus groups. Exactly. And if, I mean, 
I don't know. If, but then those meetings are open. Yep. Are they recorded? Yes. So that's something that um, you know we could sort of dip into if we wanted in terms of finding out what's going on. That's and this right. would be available online. Yep. yep. Okay. So that takes care of the um, community center committee. Um, and I think you'd already sort of talked to folks at Parks and Rec about what they're up to. Um, and did we remove you from the Historic District Commission? I, that's my that's my memory. <laughs> <laughs> that's deeply that's flawed. So <laughs> I, I think that would be only fair. I mean, what we were trying to do is distribute the work. Mm. Um, and, and also given that, you know, Margaret did a lot of work around the uh, uh, frequently asked questions and Robert Robin is being our secretary. That's a lot of work right there. So um, Robin has one committee. That's right. Well, the library, library which yeah. I haven't unfortunately done anything. Well, and you know, I don't know if this is um, something that you could maybe look at over the next month. Is mm -hmm. I remember over the last two or three weeks, I got the library's annual report, mm -hmm. which is always, um, you know, it's got a nice combination of numbers and um, you know narrative, and it might be a nice. Sort of way to um, sort of look at that and then schedule time with Susan to, that good. to see. Okay. Yeah. And if you need any support around looking at the matrix, please reach out because um, it's um, yeah. going to be a little challenging. Well, you were very kind the first time I looked at it and I haven't spent a lot of time with it. So thank you. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, Yes. Next, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> That's the important thing. Not <laughs> quite yet. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Remember if I couldn't remember when. I think it's 2024, the, the summer of 2024. That's my moment. Yeah. yeah. Um so, and Rick is work gonna work, be working on public works. Um Angela will be the Topsom Conservation Commission. Did you attend that meeting? Thompson. They were going to look over the matrix, I think. Um, they did. They did a little bit. Yep, and talked about things that haven't been been tackled yet, and what they could um, address. And honestly, I without writing right. my notes, I honestly yeah. don't remember yeah. what was said. But. Yeah, but they looked at it. Yes, that's good. They did. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I think where we are is we have the opportunity to end our meeting early. Mm -hmm. we've, we've run over a few minutes several times. I think we've earned the right to end early. I'll hang out um, with Margaret around um, some of the questions and edits. Um, but does anybody have any sort of thoughts, concerns? Our next thing will be the 21st coming together and you'll get look for some things in your email around um, the dimensional table and the use table mm -hmm. that will help us focus our minds. Mark? I just throw you a couple more updates because I think they oh, with your oh, plan. Sure. Um, is we've got some RFPs back for we're looking for engineering work. We had survey work done on Tedford Road to try to put sidewalks in. And so we have our piece back for engineering work that would do two things. Um, one, design sidewalks. And then two, there's a culvert at the kind of the, toward the northern end of the road that it keeps getting blocked and it's flooding people's yards. Um, so it's going to be a, hopefully a dual project that would replace the culvert so we don't have that back, water back up and also we get sidewalks in at the same time. Great. That's exciting. That's yeah. a body of water that uh, <clears throat> looks like a, a bit of an impoundment with dead trees and exactly. it on the left hand side. And there's some, there's some people whose wells are actually getting affected now if we get heavy yeah. water. Oh uh, dear. Because it doesn't drain enough. Sure. And the culvert's starting to get affected by water going around in places. Mm -hmm. so once the new affordable housing goes in, that's probably going to, just because it's really less space it's going to put even more water in that area so mm -hmm. so that's 
on the radar. And the other thing that's on the radar, which we're starting to work towards Pleasant Point Road, has gotten to the point now that we get a significant rain than the area where it floods. Um, there's also an area where it's starting to get close to the road where it wants to undermine it. Um, so we're starting the process of collecting information. Uh, and then um, the Coast Council of Governments is going to help us also hope we're going for some grant funding to help pay for that because that would be a quite expensive one. So that is what is being scheduled for, is it the 30th? So, so the 29th. So Wednesday the 29th yep. here. Here is to it, bring in people that live on anyone. It's a public meeting. So yeah, but come. Pleasant Point Road. So we're yep. hoping people from Pleasant Point Road will come in and talk about the effects in their areas. Yeah. The other interesting issue is we have these beautiful, I thought I'd call them road books. that are some of the town's best records, I think. The spiral about this thick. And they say, you know, in 1972, we acquired whatever road at the town meeting it was voted in. It's got the width. Some of them have the exact um, engineering legal descriptions. We have nothing in the whole book on Pleasant Point Road. Oh my! Um, it, oh. it appears to be because the road dates probably from the early 1800s, right. or maybe even before. Um, there's some language about it being a two-rod road, uh, but no actual layout. And it looks like the owners of the inland side of the road, in most cases, own the five feet or whatever that's between the road and the river. So we're going to need them to cooperate <laughs> yeah. for whatever we. We do. So you know, the other purpose of the meeting is to see to what extent people are willing to give us easements if we need to um, do work on their water side of the road. Yeah. I think Pleasant Point wasn't that historically. Uh, there were actually were settlers there <clears throat> as far as Thompson was concerned before anywhere else in, in the 1600s before the ethnic cleansing occurred. Well, what's interesting is some of the um, <clears throat> some real old plans of the Saginaw County Registry deeds. And they actually have it labeled as Pleasant Point, like in the 1700s. Uh, but they don't show any portrayed roads on them. But I think you're right. Yeah, mm -hmm. there were settlers there. So mm -hmm. one of our tasks is probably going to have to be to start going through old town meeting records mm -hmm. from 1800 forward and see if we can find any references to it. So, mm -hmm. That's a project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, I mean, at least. So I'm not quite sure how that one fits in the comprehensive plan. But, well, but. I think I think it fits in the comprehensive plan around streets for people. You know, both of them. We're just keeping like, the street. Just keeping keep the, right there. the road. The street for something. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, the, but problem, it, the right of way to the least of what's being used is so small, it would be hard to add something to it. Yeah. But on the other hand, um, there's a state forest kind of at the end of the road, and right. there's no parking area for it. Right. So true. one of the things I asked. Um, MCOG is when they're talking to people of the state, is there any interest on their part that there could be like a parking lot? Because I guess our chances are better for grants if we can show if we're doing more than just benefiting the people that live on the road. Public mm -hmm. access. Yeah, so if there could be a parking lot and get more access to the state forest, that might help justify some of the money to help yeah. improve the road. Mm -hmm. Even a very small one. Yeah. Yeah. There is some trail there. So that, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Great, thank you, Mark. That's yeah. exciting of uh, including the Tedford stuff. Yeah. yeah. So the, the RFPs are back. Yeah. And have we picked we've yeah. got a committee that's gonna go over them in the next couple of weeks and then yeah. bring it back to the select board for recommendations. Yeah. Maybe if they do that meeting yeah. but, but price the, the challenge that they're gonna have with the surveyors is it's almost like you want a sidewalk that goes on part of the street for a while and switches to the other. Because um, some areas of the street on one side are going to have more space for the sidewalk. Yeah. Um, and then there's others where some neighbors are, or kind of people are saying, hey, I'd be more than happy to give up part of my front lawn for a sidewalk. But then the next house down it's is not. someone that said, yeah. that's planted trees in the town right away. <laughs> so you better not cut my trees or else. So that's going to be the, the work <laughs> of the surveyors to try to help sort that out. Right. Just to say, in my neighborhood in Ivanhoe, that's how our little walking thing works is that there's some crosswalks, you know, so you walk yeah. on one side and you cross. And now that they redid the road, there's a little shoulder on both sides, mm -hmm. but good luck with it. <laughs> <laughs> but the That's town owns the trees. Yeah, no, we theoretically couldn't cut them down. 
And if we don't fix the culvert, we'll get enough backed up water, maybe we'll kill the trees again. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, well, that's the end the meeting at 525 is what I see as a on the clock and we'll see each other again on the 21st not all of us um, and look for some emails to prepare uh, okay thank you good thank you